What is up guys? Dr. Nate here. It is good to be back. So today we're going to be talking about disc herniations, disc bulges, whether it's in the neck, sometimes in the mid back or the low back. So I'm going to be breaking down what it is, explaining that to you, and then what it means for you going forward, whether you or a loved one have been diagnosed with a disc herniation or a disc bulge. I just want you to know that you're not doomed. Okay. So I'm going to be explaining all of this. There's light at the end of the tunnel. No, it's not a train. Uh, and I'm going to break down what you can be doing or what you can expect. So, all right, let's get right into it. All right, so let's get into it. Now I'm going to apologize in advance. If you hear a lot of background noise, there is a tropical storm going on outside. Um, but if there's any point along this video that you have questions, go ahead and comment those down below. I'd love to answer those. Um, but first let's talk about the disc herniation, the disc bulge. I think the power is maybe flickering. Yep. Power's off. All right, let's try this again. Still rebooting. We'll be back shortly. All right, we're back, I think. Um, so let's get back into it. So what is a disc herniation? Um, so there's, what is a disc? Let's break that down. So a disc is the shock absorber between your spinal vertebra. Um, I'll put a picture right up over here. Um, but we have those throughout our cervical spine, our thoracic spine, and our lumbar spine. So the most common ones to herniate are the cervical, specifically C5, C6, if you've heard that one, or down in the lumbar, typically a lower lumbar, not always, but like an L4, L5, L5, S1. Um, but like I said, I'll put that up here. Now the disc specifically, what I like to tell my patients is, it's like a jelly donut. You got that jelly inside that's constantly trying to creep its way out, and then you have the annular fibers that are in a cross pattern holding that in. So what happens is, in the low back, when you bend and you twist, you'll tighten some of those annular fibers, you'll slacken some, and you maybe get these little micro traumas, little micro tears over time, over the years, and then you'll have someone that they go to do one little move or they do something wrong and that disc gets irritated. There's also a lot of research talking about how there's not always mechanical pressure. The disc doesn't have to press on the nerve because that's when you get the shooting pain down your arm. Um, but there's chemical irritants when the disc gets irritated as well that are very caustic to the nerves. That can be pain generating and that may not necessarily show up on an MRI or an X-ray. Uh, so if you're in pain, there could be a chemical irritation. Now, it's not always the disc. That's why you need a thorough exam to figure out, is it the neck, is it the low, or in the neck, is it the disc, um, is it maybe the facets? That's a different video. This video, we're gonna focus on the disc. But, like I said, you get these little micro tears and they tear from the inside out. That jelly filling's trying to come out. Um, if we want to explain it that way. Um, so you get these little micro tears and it creeps out. Only the outer one third of the disc is innervated. Um, so that's when you start getting pain. Innervated meaning you can feel it. Um, so the outer one third, that's when you might start getting pain. Now some people, they you know get diagnosed with a disc herniation and go years and years. And then I saw this guy the other day and he's like, yeah, I had a disc herniation 40 years ago. That's why I have back pain. This is not true. Um, so the disc, is dynamic it's constantly changing there's directional preferences and different things that we can do you don't need to jump straight to drugs or surgery there's other things that we can do conservatively to manage that disc pain and actually get it to retract just because you have a disc bulge or a disc herniation doesn't mean you're always going to have that in a high high percentage i don't remember the exact number i want to say it's like 80 or 85 percent of the population is walking around with an asymptomatic disc bulge that means they don't feel any pain from it and then it regresses on its own and it's perfectly fine so just because you've been told you have a disc herniation doesn't mean you have to accept that you're going to live in fear or pain uh, we can actually get that to retract and normalize uh, without drugs or surgery. So that's really cool. Also a little side note, I have a lot of people that come in and they've had x-rays or MRIs and they're like, yeah, my back's just shot and blah, blah, blah. Clinically, I don't really care as much of what a static picture shows me of your spine, whether it's an MRI or an x-ray. Yeah, that helps me put some pieces together and focus on specific areas, but I care more about your movement patterns um, and how we can get you out of pain. I have seen 75, 80 year olds with these just degenerated spines and all that, and they're out there surfing, they're perfectly fine. You know, we treat them, we get them moving, they might have a little flare up here and there. And then I've seen people that 
don't have that much wear and tear that are just in a lot of pain. So those static pictures, whether it's an x-ray or an MRI, don't mean, still don't mean that you're doomed. Even if they're like, someone told you, oh, your back's torn up, this isn't safe, this, you need to stop moving, no. Don't listen to them, get a second opinion. Um, but that's just a little side note, side rant. What does this mean for you? So if you have a disc bulge, a disc herniation, honestly, we just need to find that directional preference. We need to do some core strengthening exercises. And again, if you need to refer back to my core video, I'm not talking about abs, I'm talking about your intrinsic core. Um, but you really want a lot of mobility in there. And that's really what I focus on is mobility at each section, because if you're stuck, and I've said this in a previous video, if you're stuck at one level, you're going to have to, you're not going to be moving here. So you're going to move more above and you're going to move more below. So that's going to cause those areas to have more issues. Uh, another thing is someone tells you, you have degeneration, uh, degeneration is just kind of like wrinkles of the spine. A lot of people get it. Is it good no not necessarily but does it mean you're doomed does it mean you can't play do what you love play sports pick up your grandkids no we just have to find a way to stabilize through those movements and make sure everything is moving properly so i'm editing the video right over here so i talked a little bit about the breathing but i realized i didn't talk about anything that i do in office or something that you could look for a provider that does similar things uh, so with disc bulges disc herniations like i said they can resolve with time uh, some of my favorite techniques to utilize and you can find providers that also utilize these techniques are McKinsey, McKinsey protocols. Um, it's more of a diagnostic tool, but also gives you some different movement patterns. So someone that does McKinsey protocols is huge. Uh, DNS talks about breathing, um, but hands on what I really like is it's called Cox flexion distraction, COX flexion distraction. Um, decompression can be good for disc herniation, disc bulges, um, but also it can flare it up. So you have to clinically have the judgment there if you want to use a decompression table. Some table, some offices have those. Uh, but yeah, flexion distraction, decompression. Sometimes if they're not too flared up, uh, I will do a typical you know chiropractic HVLA adjustment. Um, but those are a couple things that I like to utilize in office. There's a bunch of different techniques out there. A lot of you probably don't even realize that. But DNS, McKinsey protocol, inflection distraction, if you have a really bad disc herniation, those are ones to look into and see if you have a provider near you that you just uses those. So I just noticed, like I said, I'm editing the video. I noticed I didn't add that in there. I just wanted to give this little blurb and put it in there. That's pretty All much right. it for this video. If you guys made it this far along, I'd love for you to like, comment down below, and subscribe. Uh, share this with anyone that you think it might help. And if you guys have any questions, like I said, feel free to reach out to me. All right, guys. Have a good one.